Hey, welcome everyone to the Archicad User Monthly Webinar for February 2024. I have a special guest, Mark Benner, and another Vladimir Tataranu, or Tataranu Vladimir, depending on how you, you say it. So welcome to everyone from around the world. Let us know that you can hear and see the screen. Uh, use the GoToWebinar um, questions palette and uh, tell us where you're calling in from. And uh, if you have any questions about AI, if you have any um, experience with AI, it'd be interesting to, uh, you know, if you mention that as well. Uh, so, and tell us. So, so uh, Ian from Scotland, Nicole from Berkeley, Michael from Maine, Liana from Alberta, Canada. Um, so, we're already got Europe and uh, North America and Sharon from New Zealand. All right, so we're we're getting from all corners of the English-speaking world anyway. Jason from New Zealand, Gerald from Victoria. Hey, Gerald. Um, all right, so um, what's the subject today? It's AI and visualization and ARCHICAD, of course. Um, it's uh, something that um, I'll give you a, a little tiny personal story. I first heard about AI back in the 60s. Now, I was born in 1954, so I was a really young kid, but my brother, Daniel Bobro, made one of the first P uh, doctoral theses, PhD theses, in AI. He wrote a program that interpreted natural language mathematical problems, like John is twice as old as Mary was when Mary was this and that, and you, those sort of things that are really algebra. And he wrote a program to interpret that, turn it into algebra, and solve it. It was called STUDENT, which was an acronym for something, S-T-U-D-E-N-T, -E I don't know what. But he got his doctoral degree in MIT, and he was a very noted AI researcher. He was president of the American Association of for Artificial Intelligence uh, for a period. Uh, he was a researcher at Xerox Palo Alto Research Center Park, mm -hmm. Xerox Park. Um, he unfortunately died about seven years ago, and I'm not only sad because I miss him. He was 18 years older than me. He was an old, you know, he was in his 80s. Um, but boy, if he were around now and he could see what's going on with AI, you know, obviously there have been some really big breakthroughs in the last five years, in the last one year. And uh, it's so exciting for me to see that. And I'm sure many of you have been captivated by what the heck are they doing? Oh, wow, you can do that now. So it's my special pleasure to bring this particular um, installment of ARCHICAD user with Mark and Vladimir. Uh, Mark and I go back, way back. Uh, I've been with ARCHICAD since 1989, and I met Mark sometime in the 90s. Um, and uh, so we've you know, been fellow travelers on the ARCHICAD uh, journey for a long time. Vladimir had just gotten to meet, um, so welcome, you know, um, glad you're here. Um, Mark had uh, has been involved in this other uh, company that I work with, which I founded as the um, Architect Marketing Institute, and he's a very avid marketer as well as a very skilled architect and ARCHICAD user. So I know, Mark, you've been using the AI for writing copy, for doing images sort of separate from ARCHICAD, and then lo and behold, ARCHICAD starts to be able to do some AI images and Vladimir, you know, you're pushing the limits and getting AI working yourself. So let's talk about AI and how you can use it if you're an ARCHICAD user to market yourself better, to provide better service to your clients and explore design ideas as well. So Mark, tell us briefly a little bit about your background and what you're going to show us today. Then we'll switch over to Vladimir who will talk and show us a few things and then Mark will go back to you to you know to um, have the, the bulk of the presentation. Perfect yeah so I, I've, uh, I've been dabbling in, in AI um, really spurred on by, by my, my, my participation in the mastermind group that we were just talking about and we, that group is really focused on how do you leverage and take advantage of this new technology um, and we, we've used it from anything from uh, you know, writing email responses 
or creating marketing campaigns, uh, email marketing topics, uh, social media topics. Uh, and use both uh, like a chat GPT as well as uh, the, the image creation that we use is mid-journey. Uh, both of those go hand in hand to, to help uh, develop and, and, and enhance those, those functions. Uh, but it's also really appropriate and um, powerful to use in, in the uh, conceptualization and, and development of architectural projects. Mm -hmm. So I just have on screen here, I'm gonna turn off the screen sharing and of course, you'll have the opportunity to share, but um, these are some images. Just tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. You you have an image of a, a person in a room. You say it's Ty Pennington look like. I don't know. Who is Ty Pennington? Ty Pennington is the uh, national host of the um, uh, Home Improvement Show. Um, now the name escapes me. Move that bus is his, uh, is his tagline. Um, so he's he's been known in the in, in kind of the the home improvement circles for quite a while. He's kind of the Bob Vila. The, today's Bob Vila, I guess, is the, mm, okay. the characterization. But yeah, so you, so, asked, uh, you asked AI to create someone who look uh, a human figure that looked like him in a certain context, and it obliged. Yeah, I had a uh, I had an email campaign going out, which was challenging or posing the question: um, is, is, Are reality TV shows? realistic and of course the answer is no and I was trying to figure out what graphic I could use to illustrate that point and I thought well what if what if I had uh, all the hosts all the celebrity hosts from the various home improvement shows at a cocktail party arguing with one another and it, there's no way I was going to stage that and be able to take that photograph but AI lets us simulate that right okay so now you have a contemporary conceptual development and a composite image so these are ones where you fed in the, a prompt or instructions, and it generated. And these were not based on particular geometry of a, of your project, but it you got some ideas that you could share with the client and talk about, right? Right. Yeah, I use these as inspiration, get the creative process flowing, um, and it's 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 really just to kind of get ideas out there rather than going to a, a source image or a, a royalty-free image site or house or anything like that. Um, you're you're able to instead of searching for those things you can create them and they're just a little more uh directed towards your your goals mm -hmm. um so um we'll uh, of course see more of your work uh, shortly uh what will we be seeing in today's session what what are you going to be showing us uh this is a presentation that i've put together for a uh, a national networking group for the luxury home um architects, builders, interior designers, so AEC community people, uh, to introduce and suggest that everyone ought to be uh, getting inspired and going and beginning to use AI in their processes, um, hopefully to, to make better use of their time and, and, and really start doing the things that they, you know, fall off the, the task list because they just don't have enough time. Right, okay. So uh, this is a presentation you've done on more than one occasion, and uh, I know there'll be a lot that'll be inspiring. Uh, let's uh, switch gears and uh, Vladimir Tataranu, um, tell us about, you know, your work. You're in Romania and uh, what do you do and then what will we be seeing? Hello, I'm Vladimir. I'm an architect from uh, Romania. I have a small office. Actually, I have a one person office. I'm uh, alone, the only architect. Uh, I do mostly residential work from small housing to building complex of uh, apartments. Uh, and uh, today we'll show you some shortcuts that I use to make my workflow a little bit quicker. I try to uh, earn some time every time I can. And uh, I will present you the Stream Deck. It's a shortcut okay. keyboard. Yeah. Let me then uh, turn on your, so you can share your screen. Now you were going to, I think you have both uh, your webcam set up there. So you, you uh, do want yeah, to I will, uh, switch. Okay, do you, we want to show your other screen, right, um, as yep. well? Okay, let me make you presenter um, here. And uh, so we've got two things here. One is that you're an Arcad user who's searching for the latest or the, the best productivity. And so you're using a, an add-on key, uh, keypad that uh, just makes it faster to access the commands. and saves the time that way. And then I uh, did you bring some AI images of, of actual project that we can look at? Uh, yep. 
Okay. Uh, if you want to start with AI, uh, I used in the past, like uh, last year, I started to use uh, Mid Journey. Okay. Uh, I have some images made with uh, Mid Journey used for the early stages for the concept work. Right. Uh, it was okay, but it was uh, pretty hard to get something uh, to respect the geometry that uh, I wanted. So they were useful just to make some ideas in the very ages of the of the project. But mm -hmm. now with uh, stable diffusion, I can use the actual uh, geometry of the of the current project. Right. Okay. So these are just concepts like make a house with, and you're yeah. describing words like with wood siding. Um, yeah. Uh, now you're with a new stable diffusion add-on to Archicad, which I believe is free. Is that right? Uh, if you have a license for Archicad, it's uh, it's free. It's included. Right. Okay. So it comes with Archicad. Um, it's a little hard to to install, and and thank you for helping me install it on on my computer. Um, right now it's sort of in a beta early release. Um, but it, I'm sure they'll make it easier to do it. So what have you got here in terms of these? Um... Uh, here I have uh, six images of, uh, of a real project uh, that are generated just from a very simple geometry from a morph. This is just a morph, a very simple one. This is the entire project. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the images obtained with the new I engine for rendering. Mm -hmm. There are images made like in two or three minutes each one, and you just give it a prompt. It's like Mid Journey. If you used Mid Journey, you can use it uh, basically the same in Archicad, but it uses it. Uh, it recognizes your geometry straight from the from the project. Mm -hmm. You can use yeah. a morph, or you can use the real Archicad model if you want, but if not, you can use just this. Okay, so you can use an Archicad model with walls and and windows and doors if if you want. Yep. Okay, excellent. And so, just in terms of your board, there you've got different um, surface materials. You've got you know some brick and you've got some block and I can't quite tell some tilt up. Um, okay. Yeah, here we have some models made with uh, brick facade. And here we have something with uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I see different lighting conditions as well. Yep. And some have some have vegetation. Um, more obvious. Okay. And uh, so, what would be the typical prompt that you would be using? Uh, this is within Archicad. Um, uh, what 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 would be the prompt you'd be saying? Uh, for these images, I used very, very simple uh, prompts, like uh, for the one uh, in the first row, I used the uh, industrial building apartment with a concrete facade, and that's all. And uh, in the last row, the same one industrial building apartment with a brick facade. And everything in the rest, uh, he just made it up. But hmm. you can go and find detail if you if you want it to be day night uh, if you want some specific vegetation. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure whether Mark Mark are you going to be doing anything with stable diffusion today? So Mark, you're muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk. Yeah, no, nothing stable diffusion today, but that's something I'm working on. Okay. All right. So one of the things that maybe we'll um, we'll have you show uh, uh, Vladim Vladimir is uh, you know just not so much the installation because that's sort of complicated, but just how you would uh, prompt it and generate that image. Can you scroll down and just show the bottom part of your um, uh, of your presentation sheet? There. Okay. So you just yep. have um, uh, a site plan or a floor plan. Um, uh, so basically, just a simple concept. Of how the yep. building is laid out, and then you're, you're making it look like something that's been uh, dressed up, uh, and yep. uh, and all the plans here are made are made in uh, in 2D. This is a worksheet actually. It's mm -hmm. nothing modeled in 3D. It's just a worksheet, and in the 3D space, it's modeled only the the morph. 
Okay, so how, how do you give that command and once it's installed? Where do you, uh, you know, if you go back to that 3D window, I believe that's where you bring up the palette? Uh, yeah, you pick your point of view, then you open the IA palette. So this is, um, I, I didn't quite see where it came up, but it would be under Window, Menu, Palettes, and then AI Visualizer, uh, yeah. AI Visualizer is, uh, here we go, is, the last one. is, is installed. <clears throat> when Well, when you install it, it'll show up there. All right, so now you have a view of something behind here. So uh, can you let go of your drop-down menu? So this is a, is this like the most recent view that you had generated? Yeah, this is the last, uh, the last view that I made. And okay. here is the prompt that I used to make it a black and white pencil drawing. Okay, so you just and type in that. And I'm sure you can have longer descriptions or shorter ones. Yep. And you give it image size. And then I do see some controls about iterations and prompt strength. Um, and I th and when there's shape fidelity, which is an interesting thing. So can you just give us the, the, the quick explanation of each of those? Uh, the shape fidelity, if you want it to respect the uh, as much as it can, the geometry that you have. If you wanted to maybe change your geometry, you can use the slider at 80, 50, 20%. Usually I keep it at 100% because I want the main geometry. The image size, it's the resolution. It's uh, 1000 by 1000 is the biggest that you can do at this moment. The prompt strength is if you wanted to respect exactly what uh, you have written in the prompt and iterations is something like the quality of the image if you have uh, lower iterations you might get uh, big uh, artifacts in uh, in the image mm -hmm. okay it's the some something like the how how much time will it spend in uh, analyzing the model and generating the the image if you okay. just want to test some materials, some colors for your image, you can go with uh, lower iterations. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use the images for a presentation to look at as real as you, at, it can make them, you should go with the iterations as much as, uh, as you can. Okay, so um, then have you started the AI engine? That, um, is that button already active? Yeah, I, I can uh, see no. it. Has you a can stop. start it right now if you want. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, do that. Um, so it's doing some background stuff. You get a little prompt that indicates some things happening um, here, which, so then um, what I'd like you to do is just, I'll just give you a, an idea for a revising the prompt, and you can start that process, and then we can switch over to your Stream Deck um, thing, yep. and then come back, you know, in a few minutes when it's got an image. Um, so when you click to start AI engine, was that the one that's it's actually generating the um, the image right now? Uh, no, no, it's uh, just starting the the engine, the AI engine. No, it's not uh, it's not rendering. All right, so it's just getting ready to render. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, how long? How much longer do you expect it'll take before it's ready to? Uh, one minute, I think it shouldn't take too much. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, the Stream Deck. Um, so the Stream Deck, you uh, you sent me an intriguing image. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what it is and and how you're using it. Uh, basically, it's a keyboard with an uh, LCD screen in the back. So it has the advantage that you can uh, customize every key with text, with images, uh, anything you want. Uh, before I started using a Stream Deck, I used a, a real keyboard with uh, stickers on the keys. Mm, okay. And uh, pretty quickly, I uh, ran out of keys, and uh, I wanted to make another one and another one, and you don't have that much space on uh, on your desk. With this one, you have 32 buttons, but you can always change your uh, your layout on them. And so I will show you the interface. Each button is mapped to a command, and depending upon the context. Uh, or or just whenever you want, you can switch presets. Is that right? Yep. Is 
No, are I? Oh, okay. I, I had uh, I was covering your uh, thing. So if those of you who are well, as you're watching uh, in the space where we normally have webcams, we're now seeing the stream deck on on his desk. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right. So um, you want to show how uh, when you're in Archicad. Uh, now, I'm not sure with how it'll work with the, the AI engine. Let's go back to the AI engine and see, has it, uh, is it all started up now? Uh, the engine, yeah, I think it's started. It's loaded. Okay, all right, so then let's just change the prompt a little bit. Um, so, and, and for those of you who are unfamiliar, prompt in this case is, you know, the instructions. So it can be just a sentence or two, or it can be, you know, potentially longer, uh, depending on what what context this is. So let, let's um, uh, you know let's say that it's a, a wood siding and that it's in um, uh, a forested area, you know something like that. Okay. So obviously very simple instructions and and uh, you just see what it does. So you can say um, you know. Go ahead and do it. So we're we're looking at this particular view, and it's going to start putting on wood siding, and it's going to start putting some type of, I assume, forest or woods around it. So, uh, and the idea here is that you, know, you can be more specific. You know, obviously, we talk about um, you know other trims or other you know landscaping things or adding in. Uh, I don't know. I assume you can probably. Let's say add in some cars or add in people things like that yeah, yeah. okay so and uh, now you can see the progress bar in the in the command prompt if you want mm -hmm. okay all right so um in terms of the stream deck maybe we can't uh, see it while this is running or or can this yeah, can yeah. We... yeah. it should uh... okay so I guess is the AI visualization being done sort of in one part of the processor and you can actually still go back to the plan and draft something? Uh, this will test, but I don't think so. Nope. No. Okay. All right. So um, then maybe we just have to wait for it to complete before we can look at how you use Stream Deck. Um, so Mark, have you ever um, uh, used any, any uh, add-on mouse or, or key, keypad? I'm a big fan of the 3D connection, 3D mouse, CAD mouse. Uh, those have, a, have have assignable keys, like a Stream Deck. Not not quite as elegant as Stream Deck, but uh, yeah, I, I've I've programmed a bunch of uh, custom keys and, and. So do you have one that you use routinely, or is it just sort of for special occasions? My go-to is uh, is the measure command from my mouse. So I've got the the center button on my mouse execute, executes an M command so that I can quickly measure without having to release the mouse, go to the keyboard. Um, and then okay. previous and next views, I use that a lot on the forward and backward buttons on the mouse. Yeah, it looks like you've got, is that a 3D mouse there in front of the yeah, screen? Yeah. Is the small one. And and so these things, I, ha I, I think I got one years ago uh, uh, at a conference and I've never used it. But it just allows you to have more precise controls because you can rotate that dial um, as uh, in, you just have your, the way that the ergonomics work. You just can maneuver more precisely. Yeah, it's a it's a 3D. They call it a space mouse. So it's almost like it's it's got all axes covered. So you can rotate um, yaw forward and backward. Uh, so you can you can you can navigate the 3D environment much more rapidly and, and and accurately uh than you can with the keyboard and mouse commands mm -hmm. okay um so i do see some questions um uh so please all of you who are on do feel free to type in some questions i'll sort of moderate and pass them along so paul adams had a few questions did vladimir did you have to request the reflections in the glass well here hey this is nope okay. nope it just did it it knows it's glass and that right. it should have a reflection. Okay. Uh, he also asked, where is the background city and the background coming from? Or are they um, all uh, generated with the AI? Uh, everything is generated. All the textures, all the images, uh, the background, everything. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it's interesting. We see some what I would call an artifact that is a little subtle in the bottom left window. It's reflecting something that isn't there. Um, yep. You know, so but you know, at first glance, it just looks sort of normal. Uh, okay, Paul has a comment. The Stream Deck is only one hundred forty nine ninety nine at elgato.com. That is a Stream Deck. So it's made by Elgato. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So anyway, uh, I know that there are different versions. You said that there's a smaller one with fewer keys and a larger with one. With fewer buttons, yeah. The smallest one is with uh, six buttons. This one is uh, with the most with uh, 32. 32 buttons. Okay. So quite a reasonable investment if you find if you find it use, if you find it saves time. Um, go ahead and go. So this was interesting. You can see obviously a whole different concept. And I'm sure you can say make it lighter wood or make it horizontal wood or, you know, you could do other things. Um, but uh, just to go back to the plan or go back to where you would use your stream deck. And let's just see how the keys, as you move your hands on there and as you do, as you draw some things, what, what, what you're doing that starts to save time. Okay. So basically, this is my uh, main menu. Here I have uh, folders with uh, different commands for uh, design, for uh, the viewpoints, for creating viewpoints, for uh, documenting dimensions, levels, fields, lines, everything. Uh, here I have a folder with all the MEP elements, ductwork, pipework, and uh, everything for a line, for move. I think I have 50% of the buttons in uh, in Archicad. Uh, here, as you can see, I have a blank screen. I have no buttons on the screen. And uh, I will show you how you can create uh, a small building. Here I have my uh, building elements. I have my walls here. Then we can put the columns, and I'm just changing them from uh, the keyboard. Then we can switch to beams. We can insect a slab. We can put the doors, the windows, the furniture. We can put here one more wall. Oops, it's on the other side. If we need to uh, trim it, oops, we can uh, use the chamfer. Pretty fast, we can uh, insert the zone. And all of this without using any menu, any complicated shortcuts from the from the keyboard. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Um, so I assume you you don't sacrifice the keyboard. You have the keyboard over to the side, but you're showing that you don't need to use the keyboard. Or now you are using the mouse. You are um, or the mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, Let's see if there are any questions or comments from anyone uh, before we move on. Is there anything else that we should see about the Stream Deck? Uh, basically, this is a keyboard that you can use as uh, as you like. You can do anything that you can do from the normal keyboard. You can it, just record the keyboard commands on this one for for each key. You have a pretty simple menu. That uh, replicates your uh, your I keyboard. Asked you about, I asked you about the graphics. So you yeah. said that you basically went to on screen and captured each graphic image for the the the, the tools. Yeah, the, this was the hardest part in the all the programming to make the icons for the buttons because uh, I couldn't find them on the internet. To download them, so basically I made the print screen with the Archicad and I just cropped every every button right okay um so one of the things that uh you know if if someone wanted to not have to go through all of that themselves are you able to or willing to provide 
you know the images for the you know for someone to put into stream yes i uh, i can provide you with uh, the interface it's already saved it has all the shortcuts already insected all you need is my uh, is to use my sh custom uh, shortcut scheme for uh, archicad because I had to invent a lot of uh, shortcuts. Right, okay, cool. Well, that would be great if you can send that to me. Uh, I don't know that I'm gonna buy a Stream Deck, but if somebody were to ask, uh, shall I make that available to them? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, you're not, you're not planning on selling it at this point? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, you're, you're an architect, you're not in the software business. Uh, all right, great. Well, that's that's um, very kind of you to do that. Obviously, you're pushing the technology limits, and one of the things that you know people like you and people like me and and Mark do is say, all right, this may take a little while, but it's worth the effort. Of course, for other people, it's great that the pioneers get the arrows, and uh, we uh, we can pass back on um, you know some things that are already pre-made. Is there anything else that you wanted to show today? Uh, no, I think this is all. Okay. If someone wants to get in touch with you, Vladimir, uh, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, uh, via email. It's uh, the simplest. All right. So um, I know I have your email. I can at least make it available if someone requests. If you want to do it just in the um, chat window uh, or the, the questions one, put that in there. And then right now, um, no, I don't think anyone who's not an organizer can see what's typed in, but if I reply back, then they will see it. So if you want me to share that, I'll just reply back saying that's your email address. Um, yep. By the way, Gerald Hoffman asked, do you have to hold down the key as you do the action or just select it and then draw? Uh, no, it's just uh, one click. So it's like hitting a keyboard shortcut, on, except yeah. instead of holding out two or three keys, it's just one button. Okay, well, this has been um, very interesting, you know, and I'm glad you had this little building. I'm sure you would, you, uh, well, I saw your um, little snap points, so they, uh, you had thought this through. Yeah, I cheated a little. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Um, so, uh, w well done in terms of a, a prepared presentation that at least shows um, something reasonably complex. I mean, you know, to do that building in two minutes is impressive. You know, so all right. Um, let's switch gears then to Mark. I'm gonna make you presenter here. Um, so you can start showing your stuff. So, Mark, go ahead and share your screen. There it comes. Um, by the way, so Rich Matthews says, How did, how did he select the door dialog box? Um, so there was a keyboard shortcut to switch to the door tool. How would you open um, uh, the dialog box? Do you have a, a shortcut that says open the current currently highlighted tool? Uh, no, I just use Command T. Okay, uh, Command T. Okay. So, but I believe you could set up since it's just a keyboard <laughs> shortcut. You just yeah, have yeah. a keyboard shortcut that would just say open. And would refer to the tool, or 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 open the settings of the current element that's selected, because Command T is what it does. So that's all it is, Rich. Um, it's uh, it's just Command T, but either on the keyboard or or through. I missed uh, this one, but uh, I will put it on the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, okay. So we're moving on to Mark, your presentation, um, and so you have it planned for march 6th you're going to be doing it at the powerhouse smart luxury conference in chicago awesome you're based in chicago by the way based um, in chicago yeah and i don't think you really heard you talk about your firm so uh in how this talk about your firm a little bit and how presenting to other architects sort of fits into your passion about um you know helping people and helping the industry and all of that. Sure. Well, I, I'm a sole practitioner. Uh, I've worked in offices with, uh, I, I built an office that had 18 architects doing uh, luxury homes in Chicago. Uh, I've, I've worked in design build for industrial commercial design build. Um, 
and and I'm I'm an avid networker and I I learn a lot from participating in these events. So uh, I I've had I've got what I've been exposed to and developed through my mastermind work uh, with Mid Journey, um, and that and that's what I was present the I presented this originally in Minneapolis for the same group, but uh, they have a Minneapolis conference, um, and I was co-presenting at that time with another architect, a local Minneapolis architect. And he was actually using stable diffusion, not the not the Archicad stable to, uh, Archicad integration of stable diffusion, but a, a separate. Uh, it, it's available separately as its own application. Um, and so he was showing. So I, I learned a ton of stuff just by uh, you know being being in that environment and and working with people who are also pushing that pushing that envelope. Um, but I also do a lot of. Uh, Collaboration and cons consultation with uh, with architects here in Chicago. Uh, I've got um, projects in Colorado, Wisconsin, uh, and then I'm, I'm also working with some people in Min in Minnesota, Minneapolis to uh, to develop some work there too. So it's just being uh, kind of out there in the in the world with um, with these new technologies is is a, a great way to meet new people and learn new things. Awesome. So. Uh... What are we going to see in this um, in this slide? So, deck? Yeah, so this is this is intended as an introduction uh, to a, to a community that is notoriously slow on taking up technology. Construction is kind of the the last adopter of of uh, leading edge technologies, and so this is this was created just to, as an introduction to show people how um, how they might use AI starting today um, and 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 use it in their practice to make um, make their, their processes and their, their activities more efficient. So this is a little introduction, that's me uh, in Barcelona. Uh, so what is AI? Uh, it's all these things. It's, um, you know, the, it, it's, it's your personal assistant is the way I like to think of it. Uh, what it's not yet, it's getting there, but it's not a drafts person, it's not your legal counsel, it's not your trusted advisor, uh, it's more like a super talented intern. Um, so it is, it does anything a personal assistant can do, can uh, set schedules, write copy, uh, create images. It's great for design, for researching design. Uh, there are risks that come along with AI. Um, it's, it, it only can do what it does with what you give it. So garbage in, garbage out. Um, while these might be interesting, maybe Gary-esque solutions, I, I don't think I'm that's not really something I'm looking to design, uh, but with with the with sloppy prompts, you uh, you end up with that. And uh, my co-presenter in, in Minneapolis loves to say AI lies all the time. Uh, there's a fairly um, infamous uh, case of a of an attorney who created his entire uh, case using Chat GPT uh, and and dragged his law partner into the into the uh, issue because he didn't have his own federal credentials um, so built a whole case law out of using chat GPT and when he was challenged by the, the opposing counsel uh, for the for the case law that had been presented they, they said they couldn't find what what he was presenting uh, the judge told him to go back and verify it and he went back to chat GPT to ask was that real case law that you gave me and chat GPT said yes so they, they his he and his partner were both uh, both suffered uh, uh, disciplinary action as a real result. So you got to be really careful when you're using any any form of AI because it, it it it's very believable. People trust it, but you need to trust but ver but verify. Uh, as I was as I've been uh, working in the AI field uh, mostly with Mid Journey and Chat GPT, I did a little research to figure out to determine what else is out there, and just a quick search resulted in in all of these dedicated applications. These are all, architectural applications that use AI in their operations. Um, that's just a list, and I picked out a couple that I thought were pretty interesting. So make it, M-A-K-E-T dot AI is one of those. And this one really answers the question. Every time I present this, uh, most architects and interiors that I know, uh, they want to they want to replace or, or, or supplement their intern staff. They want some, someone who, something to draw floor plans for them. Um, and before I made this presentation, I hadn't found anything that uh, that would do that. So this, these are just a few of the things that Make It does, and these are some of those sample images. It's a really high quality, um, fair degree of believability. There's an awful lot of 
awful lot of valves on this wall, so start to reveal some of the uh, inaccuracies there, but you get the sense. So it does a lot of different styles. Um, but then what it does, the, by, just by entering your room count and giving it a description of what the what the project scope of work is, make it will create conceptual floor plans and give you a palette from which you can choose. And then from these, you can select those and, and advance them with iterative AI and you know push and pull make uh, you can you can kind of scrub out walls that you don't want to have and, and it stays up with you and, and creates a a floor plan concept it's also great for research so it, you can using natural language ask questions you know tell me about straw bale construction uh green concrete blocks so you can do a lot of your research right within the in within this interface uh, you can also modify the images so it creates an Im original image. And then you can tell it, you know, give it to me a boho or bohemian style, uh, and it'll it'll make those adjustments really quickly. And the, one of the things I really love about this is you can upload the code PDFs, building codes and zoning codes. Take the PDFs and upload them in to make it, and then ask it natural questions like, what's the setback in zoning R5, or what's the maximum height for commercial districts. So I really and, and it, it'll point you to the location in the code where it found that. So now you can you can verify that it's telling you it's found the right reference and you can quickly slice and dice what you're looking for. Uh, another one which I really like is called Architectures. This one's more of a comor commercial solution. Um, very similar kind of interface. You enter some basic parameters. You can load in your, your uh, property dimensions, property profile. And then it comes up with these real very rapidly comes up with these 3D solutions. Uh, you can see your 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 ground plane, uh, and this is these are created with with just a single line. Each one is a single line to create this model structure. When you talk about a single line, you're talking about just an outline, uh, just a center line. So on this one, you would draw from here across here, and it, it creates that. Um, and then based on the parameters you give it, the, the room mix and minimum dimensions, and uh, it will create uh, suite layouts using that, that same. So it, this, again, was just a single line to draw the, the bulk of the building. And architectures created all this other detail, put in the stairs. I, I think you put in, the, you tell it the number of stairwells that you'd like to have, and it distributes those equally throughout the property, throughout the project. Um, has a lot of, uh, in, in all of these, everything we've looked at, uh, these are independent design programs, but these will feed right into your BIM software. So ARCHICAD can take the output from this and pick up the design and carry it from here. Uh, it, it features an automatic parking garage designer, if that's, uh, if that's what you may be into. Uh, and then you also get all the building data that comes with, uh, with, with that design. And it does a pretty, you know, it gives you a shaded model, which is nice to look at. Um, now, this this is a just a quick um, animation or not a video of of how the process works. So they already put in their um, site, and now now they're just drawing in the that single line, and you can see how it's adjusting and making it. And now you can stretch the line. You can tell it you want it to be ragged or regular. And it very quickly comes up with those concepts. Uh, so my co-presenter was James McNeil out of Minneapolis. He's using stable diffusion in, in kind of a unique way, I think. So this is a sketch done at the design table with his client. So it says this, it took him about five to 10 minutes to sketch this up. Uh, so some curved stairs, railings, columns, a lot of architectural detail here, but it's, it's a very rapid uh, sketch. And then they want they wash that through stable diffusion, and it creates all of these um, these the, 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 these this variety of, of rendered images. And you can select any of these and advance them, do iterative iterative AI, and take these to the next level. And here you can kind of see some of where it falls apart a little bit. These railings don't connect all the way down to the newel post, but you really get the sense of what what the idea is here, and you get it's a it's a much more communicative. It's a little little uh, little funky here in the details, 
but this tells the story. Uh, takes that five minute sketch and turns it into a photorealistic rendering. So, so that five this. minute sketch, was that done by hand? Done by hand, yeah. Yeah, we, you can do that. Um, it's just marker uh, or pen and ink on a, on a drawing pad. And so he did that at the at the table with the clients in front of them. So they the client walked away with this image in their mind and then later that afternoon, when they ran th this image through uh, Stable Diffusion, he was able to follow up and say, you know, the, here's what it'll look like when it's when it's all done for real. Wow. And ArchiCAD's doing the same thing. So Architect, ArchiCAD is using the 3D geometry and then creating these, these renderings from that. It's just ArchiCAD gives you a, a better, a more reliable, accurate starting point. So those are a few interior shots. You can also do some exploration of exteriors. So here's kind of a contemporary, kind of a conservatory solution. And so from that sketch comes this rendering. Um, here's a kitchen. I think this is done in Revit, just as easily done in ArchiCAD. So it's a, a basic layout of a kitchen. And then you can run that through Stable Diffusion and come up with these variations. Same thing with a uh, master bath layout, pretty pretty ornate um, sketch. And then <laughs> I think they overdid it with the plants a little bit. Uh, the, the framed art piece on the wall became a mirror. The hanging towel became a towel warmer, but um, still pretty pretty useful exploration of how this space might be finished. So these um, those multiple images they were were they done with prompts saying make it with marble make it with wood these yeah the the interface is very similar to what Vladimir was showing in the ArchiCAD environment uh, it's just a standalone version of Stable Diffusion that does that so you would you would load in your your source image uh, upload that into the software and then give it the prompts and the parameters that you're you're seeking and then it it creates the renderings uh, just as we saw. In the demonstration. Now, are, when you describe something like, you know, have with different materials, are you able to point at things or you just have to describe the bathtub is this? I, I think you have, right now, my understanding is it's all through the prompts. So you have to describe, you know, the bathtub is going to be a marble or a porcelain finish or whatever, whatever that may be. Um, and and there's there, um, in, in mid journey, there's a great deal of um, of. Um, priority given to the structure of your prompt. So the things that are at the front of the prompt are, are higher priority than the things that are at the end of the prompt. Uh, that's, that's I don't know that that's the case in stable diffusion, but it's pretty pretty uniform. Uh, so that's, that's the standalone stable diffusion. Uh, one of the things I really like for everyone, anyone today can start using AI in, in a Zoom meeting. There's a plugin called Read AI and it becomes your note taker. Um, so as your as people join your conversation in Zoom, uh, the the note taker takes uh, references who's speaking, and and writes a um, a, a full um, dialogue of, of what was said and and who, and who said it, and then it gives you lots of um, performance evaluation. So at the end, it'll give you a summary. It'll give you task lists based on the the content of the discussion. And it'll evaluate all of the speakers on the on the discussion and say that you know Joe was was a very positive influence on this conversation. He was 20% of the content, and um, Ron was was kind of negative and, and a little bit sleepy. Uh, so it, it, it's a it's a really great tool, not only just for getting the data from your conversation, but it can really help your team become more proficient at the meeting. And anyone can do that today. So that's called Read AI. It's called Read AI, and you'll you'll find it on the um, uh, as you as you launch a Zoom meeting. Uh, it's it's one of there's a bunch of of uh, icons on the right hand side. Read AI is one of those things that they recommend. So if you just click on that, you get a free trial. I think I've, I think I've got another year left on the free trial. So it's <laughs> it's basically free. Wow. Uh, but the thing that everyone loves. We, the reason I think we're all here today is image creation. 
uh, which I use. Um, I, I right now I'm using uh, uh, Mid Journey to do that, and, and Mid Journey has a lot of the same startup challenges as, as Stable Diffusion does. Um, but once you once you finally get it set up, then then you can start having fun. Um, so I, I use it um, for a number a number of applications. This is kind of a sketchy, um, you know, architectural sketch style uh, illustration style solution. Um, but I, you know, anytime you know, I used to go to royalty free image sites or house and try and find image uh, inspiration images to work with. And you know, I was, I was always drawing comparisons and saying it's going to be like this piece of this image. Uh, now we can create whole images that really speak to what we're to the message we're trying to share. Um, so we go really quickly and, and get really high quality imagery out of that. Um, so it can be pen and ink, it can be marker, watercolor. So these are all mid-journey outputs. Uh, the other thing I as is, is I as is I market my services and tell my story, uh, I'm I'm always envious of of other other architects who have uh, you know process pictures of of the client meeting where they're talking about selections or in the they're in the design meeting it's featuring you know shows real people in the process working, and I just I've never had the the I guess the awareness or to to actually stop a meeting and say do you mind if we pose for a picture here I want to show this on my website. So AI can recreate those scenes for you, and so this is just a this is a fictional person looking at some fictional uh, selections. It just starts to tell the story. This is part of the process. We're we're going to sit down around a table and talk about materials, and this is a picture of how that looks. Uh, there's my Ty Pennington lookalike image. He's a little shocked, I think, at, at the price of whatever the construction's coming in at. <clears throat> Uh, I had another uh, another email campaign that was talking about you know if if you put the T close to the hole it's a lot easier to get a hole in one, <laughs> so that was that was this image, and then this is a um, this is another image. Uh, one of the things that Mid Journey does really well is mood boards, and I've got some examples of that. Well, this is an this is a room that was um, the application of several materials that were selected through this mood board process. And so this is a finished image image of what a space might look like. With those selected materials, so you you provided geometry uh, or or just a um, a two D drawing, and then uh, materials in uh, in a separate image or what? I can show you those prompts. It's it's really just prompts. So it, we didn't start with any kind of geometry at all. That's just a fictional room that Mid Journey created to show those materials. Hmm. Um, and I like I, I like in my own process I like to show. Um, you know the the really the, the progression. Uh, you know we we have this architectural style drawing that becomes uh, kind of a, a wireframe, uh, and then finally the full image. And this is another email campaign to to kind of illustrate the the value of using um, BIM 3D in your in the design of your home. So how did you create that composite image? Was it was it several different iterations that you overlaid in a photo program, or did it do it all of that? That that was all part of the prompt. And so, it, so you gave a prompt. It created a fictional building, but with all of this stuff in it. Yeah, I can't remember the exact. Uh, I could go back and find it, but the the, the prompt was something like, "Show me a a three D modeled home with the origin drawing as the base." You know, you, you kind of have to play around with with the with the structure of those prompts, but um, you, you kind of figure out what what's most important and, and what what Mid Journey responds to. So this is a um, this is a barn project, and I've got it as a feature later on. But this is a a project in uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey. Homeowner bought a 1800s era barn, <laughs> and I started to sketch on top of the the um, the base drawing that I created for it, and I was really just spinning my wheels. And so I thought, oh, why don't I, why don't I let AI do its job and give me some ideas of what a what a barn conversion might look like? And so that's that was uh, what the, what it came up with. And then I, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to see those with a silo? So show me those same style drawings, but now let's add a silo in. Uh, these are some of those uh, uh, fictional celebrities. So we've got uh, uh, the new guy from uh, this old house. Um, 
we've got Chip and Joanna Gaines. So it's a room full of lookalikes. This this is the cocktail party with all the celebrities arguing with each other that that uh, reality home improvement shows aren't real are not real. So so did you just give the, the names and it knew them, or you gave uh, photos to work with? No, strictly the names. So I, I said uh, I listed out all the celebrities that I could think of, and uh, Mid Journey took over. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get sued over that. I don't think I I don't think I will be. Um so things we that I do, conceptualization, alternative explorations, mood boards, and I no longer am looking for stock images. Uh let's see, I go back. So that's the barn in New Jersey. It's still standing up. There's a few holes, it's in rough shape. Uh so I started to explore different barn concepts and ideations. And those were still too barney. So uh, then we moved into the, the the residential conversion of the barn. Uh, and then I, I was experimenting with. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little concerned that AI is too good, that it makes our jobs look too easy. And that's a that's a struggle I think we all have to face. Um, so my first presentation to the client was not any of those photorealistic images. I used those and then overlaid them on my as-built model and just picked up some of the details just to give it a sketchy um, start starting point. And then you know we can get into the the ArchiCAD uh, renderings, start exploring some of the different finishes and angles. And I think when, once once we get stable diffusion in, um, installed and working, these are going to take that next step into really hyper-realistic rendering. Uh, one of my favorite things that uh, MidJourney does is these mood boards. And so I have down here the prompt that was used to create this. And so this is more of a, an artistic sketch of what materials might look like. And then we have this um, sort of a bento box solution, which is more photorealistic, and it's putting together different metals and stones and woods. Uh, and then this is this is the final product with the room using those materials and those color palettes. So rather than going to every material house in Chicago and finding a tile and a and a piece of metal and a, a you know all the different finished samples that we might be looking for, uh, we can quickly audition any and all of those without having to leave the office completely through a, a, a vignetted room. So I, I see this as these as kind of a progression that we might have. Um, you, know, you might show a, a markered version of it if you wanted to start the kind of the, the, the more rudimentary way, but definitely we can start with these these rendered images of, of uh, materials and then show it in mm -hmm. a finished room. Uh, so wow. the materials are virtually limitless. You can you can call out any species of wood, any stain, dark light gray uh, sheen you can give it you can tell it uh, you want uh, matte or um, um, gloss um, those are some stones we've got some kind of textile finishes here some metals and then these are the compositions that put it together and it, it fills it I, I, I don't know that we <laughs> I don't think the prompt included anything about greenery in the in the view so it kind of uh, did that on its own but um, it's I, I think it's a nice touch. And so if you uh, if you think this is sort of nice, but I don't like this or I don't like that, you just tell it to generate it again, and it does a different variation. Yeah, you, there's a couple of things. So you can go at, back in and have it re-render and give you a, a whole new set. So the way Mid Journey works is it you tell it a prompt, and it presents you with four images, which they call a proposal. So they're four medium-sized resolution images in a in a in a single image and then you can tell it that you'd like number number one is really your favorite so you want to upscale it so there's a u1 which tells mid-journey to upscale the the first image to a larger resolution um and then there's also a, a row of v buttons for variation so you can you, if you like basically like image number three you can say show me a variation of image number three and it'll re-render that in um, with a, a new flavor. 
So, uh, by the way, Cindy just asked, uh, is it, all of this is mid-journey. So, right now, this is uh, this is mid-journey. This is all mid-journey. Right, okay. So, the, the answer for those of you who came in late, like Cindy, uh, Mark has been talking about a lot of different applications of AI, but a, a chunk right now is all mid-journey. Right. So this was a, this is more of a shoshugiban finish. So this is that charred, that Japanese charred wood uh, representation. So there's there's virtually nothing that that Mid Journey can't pull together for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I would I would uh, challenge, and these are these are the sponsors for our uh, Chicago conference. So that's that's why we're seeing those. But um, I'm going to challenge everyone, and I would challenge everyone here to uh, to consider how would you use uh, AI in your practice, um, from BIM to image creation, Chat GPT, um, and I I still have to get my uh, my my uh, case studies from my my uh, sponsors and see how they're using mid uh, AI in their practices. But there's a, a um, at at the Minneapolis conference I ran into a realtor, and their company is writing uh, based on AI. Um, technology, they're writing custom software to help their agents visualize houses and what they could be, you know, houses that are listed with their with their agents. Um, they can dress those those um, typical standard real estate images into something that's something more presentable. Mm. Awesome. So there are a couple of questions here. So Cinda went on with the question saying, um, uh, do you prefer Midjourney to instead of others, and how does it interplay with the ARCAD model at all? And uh, how does it, you know, what about the new AI that's incorporated in ARCHICAD? So, Cinda, earlier we had looked, Vladimir um, showed uh, the stable diffusion, which generates images within ARCHICAD, but also can be run independently, um, and that can be based on the geometry, the shape and form of your buildings, with either very closely following it or taking some liberties um, there. Uh, whereas this mid-journey stuff that you're doing, this is, um, no, I can't remember, with, with the mid-journey, can you give it the 2D images? Is that what you were um, doing earlier with the staircase and all of that? That was stable diffusion. That was stable diffusion. So stable diffusion is able to follow a visual image or a 3D geometry. I guess, actually, Vladimir, you were saying that it, it looks just at the image. So even though it's the 3D model in ARCHICAD, you're saying, here, take this image of a 3D model and dress it up. So really it's doing a flat thing and it's, but it, I guess it understands planes and surfaces visually, you know, enough to, to do that. Right. Yeah, that's the distinction I see between the two. Uh, Mid Journey is great for conceptualization, things that you don't have a starting point that you need to, to gain some, some inspiration maybe, uh, and stable diffusion is really work with this geometry and give me a final, uh, a really nice rendered image. So uh, for those of you who do, did come in late, like, like Senda, you can watch the recording on you know my ARCHICAD uh, channel on YouTube or on the ARCHICAD user website, so you'll see these things. Um, now Ryan Gear, hi Ryan. Um, he said, on the mood board, it seems like there are, it looks like there are notes next to the materials. Are those notes actually associated with the material? Say something like three inch by six inch tile or rustic wood floor. Even better would be to call out real materials. And I've been thinking of creating a material repository that AI would look at for my designs, kind of like favorites. Anyone else have ideas like this? So uh, want to comment on that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Mid Journey will will accept any. So if you've got an oak or a, a any species of wood, um, it'll it will interpret that, and then and you can go further and say I'd, I'd like that I'd like a honey stain on knotty alder, and it will do its best to to represent that. And it, it, it it's always a a matter of kind of pushing and pulling. And if it didn't come back with exactly what you're looking for, you might have to rephrase your prompt or add to your prompt. Um, but yeah, that's, um, and, and let's see if we can zoom in a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So these are the prompts. Um, so everything that's at the beginning of the prompt, these, this is treated with the highest priority. 
Um, and then down here are the, are the instructions to the rendering engine. It's suggesting it wants to use version 5.2. So it's, um, Mid Journey has only been around since early 22. And yet there's probably, well, there's at least five versions that have happened over the course of a year. Um, and so it, you, you can select which engine you want it to use. And some of them are a little grainier, grittier. Um, this is the aspect ratio. So it's a nine, nine by 16. Um, and then the, the sketchy renderings are using a different rendering engine still. That's what their NIGI, N-I-J-I-5 is, is the rendering, rendering engine that's used to create these hand-drawn looks. So you can tell mid-journey which engine to use and it will it will do that so if if someone in this audience wanted to use mid mid journey and get results like this is there a training are there guides how did you learn how to do all of this stuff there is a guide um that one of our mastermind members found let me see if it um there, there, there's a guy who's written two that i could find two pdf guides on the use of mid journey um and one of those was specific for the um uh for the mood boards let me see if i can just find that hmm. okay so uh when you find it you know certainly make a note of this information and and post it as part of the recording of this so people can you know track down track it down um you and i mark had talked a little bit about the possibility of creating a course on you know AI for architecture. Uh, so that's something that uh, if, if any of you are interested in, it's not gonna happen next month, but um, I know Mark, you said that uh, that is something that you might consider. You, you love teaching and helping people. And although you're busy as an architect, it's something you might actually wanna do at some point. Is that right? I, I am definitely interested in doing something like that for sure. Um, I think it's just really exciting, and, and if nothing else, it's my selfish uh, desire to to be exposed to everyone else's uh, groundbreaking and innovative ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I can play in that sandbox, that 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 helps me. Uh, okay. So this is that guide. The uh, author is George Hutchins. Okay. And I really recommend this because it walks you step by step through what is a pretty rigorous um, configuration. So this is the Mid Journey sign up screen. It's uh, you can tell uh, IT professionals created this software because <laughs> they have done everything that uh, that an IT professional might do. So this is step by step. You make your way to Mid Journey. You create an account. Uh, it'll send you an email, and then that once you verify that, then you're logged in. Um, and it's uh, the tricky part is getting um, this Mid Journey bot. Mid Journey bot. Um, because uh, Midjourney runs through a software, uh, a, a, a messaging application called Discord. So I know some people are already in, uh, in, in have that installed already, and that's a great start. Um, so the, the trick is getting Midjourney loaded up into there. Uh, there's a you, you have to sign up for a. It's I, I pay thirty dollars a month to use Midjourney, um, and and that buys me what they call fast time on their servers. Um, so once I exhaust and I've not exhausted it yet, but once you exhaust that, then you're kind of throttled down to the slower servers uh, until your until your um, contract renews, your month renews. So um, so if you can share the link to this, uh, this is um, uh, right now you've got it as a downloaded PDF, and is this something that George Hutchins is provided for free, or that he sells, or what? He sells this. I, I want to say it was fifteen or twenty dollars, so it was a really affordable. Yeah, expensive. So um, if you if you can share the link to where one would find more information and possibly buy it, that would be great. Um, you want me to send that to you? Uh, sure, uh, that, that's fine, and I can post it. Um, so I do see a couple of some more questions and comments, and I'm glad keep them coming in because it's always good to have interaction and and just you know make sure that uh, we have a good discussion so david Yaguchi. hey david um so these images from mid journey are just images how to go to the next level of specifications of materials based on the rendered images of possible architectural solutions does this generate elevations and plans so mid journey wouldn't do that right um, yeah i i think uh, i i would lean on archicad and stable diffusion the blend of those two 
Stable Diffusion giving you the realistic rendering and ARCHICAD does what it does best and that's construction documents and specifications. Right, okay. Um, so uh, Pedro Navarez says, are all architects on a career risk? Would we be left behind with the new generations? What's your opinion, Mark and Vladimir? So far, I haven't seen AI with the ability to stamp a set of drawings. Um, yep. And the, the 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 famous phrase I've heard is this: you're not likely to, as an architect to lose your job to AI, but you might lose your job to another architect using AI. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. All right. Um, Cindy asks, or find a college student, uh, Kellar, who's her daughter, and all other architecture students are using Midjourney daily. Okay. Um, all right. So Cindy posted a link to um, the George Hutchins. Uh, site. I'm just going to um, go just reply to it so it's visible. So it's uh, george-hutchins.com slash learn is at least the link that she's sharing. And it says it's, uh, she said it's $50. Um, mm-hmm. And R- Ryan Gear also posted that. But 10% off now, so you can save $5. Um, nice. I have no connection with them, but, uh, you know, anyway, looks like it's a, a well put together thing. And uh, there's also, well, so there's Ryan posted the um, a direct link because it maybe he has more than one um, uh, what do you call it um, guide yeah more than one thing um, yeah this is the architect's guide then there's also the mood board guide very similar but it, it one focuses uh, obviously on mood boards and the other is um, architecture related right okay and then Ryan says it makes licensure more important so yeah you're you pay good money to study and go in depth to make real buildings that will really stand up and (laughs) really meet code and all of that and of course take all that time to pass your exams and and maintain a license so yeah uh, however for a lot of purposes and a lot of people's you know perceptions this is going to put some things at risk so you you know i like that your statement you're not going to lose your job to ai but you may lose your job to someone who uses ai who otherwise you might be a better architect but they do some you know pretty cool things um where they might be just as good an architect but they they can do some stuff that impress the client yeah the the take that so i had this conversation in depth with the jmad group in minneapolis and uh yeah, I asked him, so aren't you afraid to share this finished image with having only invested maybe 20 minutes in the design? And he said, well, if I don't do it, some other kid is going to. So, <laughs> you know, we, we know how to wield the tools. We're the professionals. We can get this executed. And if I can expedite the process and show them decision-making images sooner, that's that's the way he looks at it. And I think there's a lot of validity to that. Now, you um you showed a hand sketch, you know, like that intricate staircase being dressed up in, um, I guess, stable diffusion. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we've, we've talked about the um, mid journey just being conceptual. You give them words and it, it just does it without paying close attention to any ge- uh, specific geometry. Um, can one take a floor plan and generate a 3D model I mean, obviously, you can do it in ArchiCAD, and we can trace a floor plan if it just was a sketch. Um, but can you can these 3D tools say, all right, well, you've got a plan, and the kitchen is over here, and the living room's there, and the entrance is this, and and etc. Can it interpret that and turn it into a 3D model? Vladimir, Vladimir may know better. My understanding is all of these applications are simply creating images. Okay. Can you tell it, take this, uh, you know, this is a line drawing, turn it into a 3D extrusion, you know, like, a, or do you actually have to have it in ARCHICAD, extrude up the walls and, and do things? I think you can get an image of extruded walls, but I don't think ARCHICAD or Revit or any other application is going to interpret that, not yet, as 3D. Right. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, uh, so, Colin... Our old friend Colin Healy says, great presentations. Thank you. Um, so we have some more time. It's 2.15 um, here. It's an hour and a quarter in. Uh, was there more that you were going to show, Mark? 
that's the extent of the presentation. I, we can kind of go through these guides a little bit and see some of what's there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, are you able to are you able to bring up Midjourney and just show yeah at least a little bit of manipulation because I have yeah. no idea what it what it looks like. So here's the process. You you would launch Discord, which is a message messaging application, and it's going to go through and make sure it's got the most recent load. <clears throat> so well, that's yeah. So and uh, what we see here in the background while well, that's loading up, this is that prompt framework I was discussing. So the things at the top are most important. So image style, and then the viewpoint cameras. So you can really talk to Midjourney as if it were a camera. You can tell it um, lens ratios, um, give it a subject, description, location, atmosphere, and then the aspect ratio. So that's that's kind of the formula that we use to work with mid-journey. Let's see what happened to my... Still, it's a little update here. So um, Andy Bunbury says, I'd be interested to hear more about stable diffusion. So we will spend some time now with mid-journey. And then if, um, I know Mark, you haven't used stable diffusion, um, no, no, you've used it standalone. You haven't done it within Archicad. Right. Um, maybe the two of you can go back on that. Let's let's spend it, you know, the next ten minutes or some chunk of time on uh, Mid Journey, and then come back to Stable Diffusion, which, as we've said, can be run from within Archicad on an image that you're creating from your model. Yeah, and I think that's that's groundbreaking. I think that's going to make. A, I mean, everything about AI has been groundbreaking so far. Um, and I think that that partnership between ARCHICAD and, uh, and Stable Diffusion, uh, especially on, on good hardware, is going to be amazing. So, it's, so uh, uh, wondering if all the people who are watching, who else has used any of these AI tools, you know, more than just opening them up? You know, who else is using it productively or at least, um, you know, has found it? useful so far because it's clear the potential is there but i'm just curious out of we have right now um how many people are on the call um can't quite tell i think we had last time i checked we had about 75 people um let me just see here curious um here oh there it is okay yeah we're up to uh 80 86 people. So how many of you do, do type into the questions if you've had some, you know, experience using it productively? All right. So Ryan says, I have not. Um, Cinda, not me, but her daughter has done amazing stuff as a freshman in architecture school. Um, David Yaguchi says, Midjourney provides realistic rendering. Is this comparable or compatible or alternative to twin motion or other rendering programs? Um, it's rendering a single image with a lot of interpretation after some minutes, right? Um, whereas twin motion, you're telling it all the stuff. You're, it's not interpreting it. You're saying, put this tile here, put this lighting there, and then you can move around in real time, like a video game. So it's a totally different experience but you have to put all the stuff in there. You have to put the people in there and the vegetation and the, you know, and touch every surface or at least every category of surface and say what you want on it. So different type of visualization. Yeah, I, I see twin motion as being the last in the steps because you have all, the ultimate in control over the materials, the lighting, the the pathway experience that, that the viewer will have. Um, but in my experience, it, it's really a struggle to, to enter in all of that information and come up with a good looking image. You invest hours, days, and weeks to come up with a twin image, a twin motion solution that looks good. So I would say, I would put uh, stable diffusion, I would say mid journey is the first to develop concepts and, and get, a, get a, a rapid access to a, an image that is appealing to you. And then use that as your model, your your image to to, to model toward. Um, 
and I would then march through stable diffusion with ARCHICAD and then finally into um, twin motion. And by the way, twin motion is only one of the real-time renderers. We now have mm -hmm. connections to Enscape directly as well, and there, there probably are some others. Yeah. So this is the mid-journey interface. You can see some of the history, and that's one of the nice things about this chat interface is you can go back in time and see all of the images that you've created from the beginning. Um, so each of those are alternates between a prompt and one or more images. So it typically creates four images at a time. Yeah, so the, the very first rendering that you get is what they refer to as a um, pro, uh, promotion. I think it's a, a proposal. So this four pack, and you click on it, you get a, a blown up version. So this is what mid, mid journey refers to as a proposal. So upper left is one, two, three, and then four. And then down here are those re-render button so u1 through 4 and v1 through 4 will cause it to re-render any of those either a larger um a larger resolution or a slight variation on the on the theme um i'm just looking for one that i've already so here's here is a proposal uh i was um i was auditioning images for my my uh, christmas card so i wanted to have a, a snowy chalet image uh, so that was the proposal, and then I picked, uh, looks like number three, and it'll tell you, I think down here, yeah, image three. So this is the upscale image. So it's it's that image is the same size as all four images, uh, and you can have it you can have it upscale even further. So there's upscale two times, four times. Um, so you got a lot of different really simple controls to to focus on that. Um, but so then the, the process is um, when you first launch for the first time, you'll you won't, since you haven't created anything, you won't see any of these in the list above you. But you'll have this command line prompt, and what you do is you hit forward slash, and then I for imagine, and it it kind of jumps into where that prompt is. And these are all I and mean, these are the the prompts that are available. I I can tell you that I've only used one. <laughs> imagine. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got I got to master this one before I go on to the next one. Uh, so that's that's filled in the command line and, and put your cursor in this field, and you could so it's imagine and then um, um, contemporary spelled right home. So it can be uh, that the prompt can be that simple. Uh, so I hit enter and it started the rendering, and it's right now it's waiting for a space on the server. And it's now started. It's zero percent done. It's on. It's on one of the fast servers. And as soon as it starts rendering, it'll pop up a kind of a blurred image of it, and it'll continue to develop while it's rendering. And how long does it typically take? Uh, I think we've been at this for about 15 seconds. We're halfway done now. 75 percent, 80 percent. So it's it's a minute maybe two. Mm -hmm. So there's our proposal for four contemporary homes. I, I think I would argue the contemporary nature of that one, but you get the idea. So uh, I kind of like the way this, I, I like the cantilevered roof effect. So let's take a look at um, an upscale version of number three. And these go a lot faster. So there's the upscale version of three. And maybe that's not quite exactly what we're looking for so let's do a, ver a variation on three and this one actually goes back through and re-renders this one it's kind of holding in a queue so it was able to create the higher resolution more rapidly and while that's doing that let me find one of the uh, you know, add in uh, um, or change the siding or, you know, can you do instructions with that? Yeah, so let me, I, I thought I'd pull one of these, um, huh, you do a furry house. <laughs> Let's see, I, I'm just gonna copy out of this here. Um, no, it's not gonna let me do that one. Huh. 
Oh, this, they don't have as many props here. Um, well, let me go back to the uh, presentation where I've got those props already pulled out. So, so, um, for instance, so I'll copy that. So I just grabbed this mood board. Now we'll go back to mid journey. Here's our upscaled version, variation version of number. Oh, it's still working. <laughs> it hasn't started. So a uh, question. So um, you mentioned good hardware. Um, Ruben asks, what is the hardware you recommend? And then Cinda asks, what payment plan are you using? How many generated images are you using a month? And she says there are eight dollars, twenty-four dollars, forty-eight, or ninety-six, or, or no, there are, uh, you know, a bunch of different per month options. Uh, my recollection is I'm paying about thirty dollars a month, and I have never run out. So you might start with eight and see the eight dollar plan and see where that gets you. Um, but yeah, I think that's a that's a good starting point. <laughs> And uh, Karsten, our old friend who uh, teaches twin motion, among other things, says, I'm glad twin motion is not obsolete yet. I'm sometimes worried about my future in visualization, though. Any take on this? Uh, he's asking you, Mark. Uh, I, I, I still haven't seen a really successful AI um, animation solution. I, I've seen some people who are doing some video with AI, um, but nothing yet that, that has the control that uh, twin motion offers in my opinion mm -hmm. so much more effort to set it up but once you get it set up then of course you can just move through it freely and we all know that uh, that has a lot of value particularly since you can control the geometry the way that any good architect would do in, in, a, in a project you these are concepts these are ideas um, but you're gonna need to make it suit the client say suit the code and all of that so is it still not um so we, we've got our variation so here's our, our variation of number three it gave us a new proposal that has similar similar style elements and then you can, can, use can, it up can you also take a view from from a view from a higher up position or something like that or yeah, you can yeah you can tell it among those so the, the viewpoint um you could, could be an aerial could be a ground level any of those uh so i i copied the uh, mood board prompt from the presentation and just plug that in here so this is a more robust command line and uh, we'll let it render that and then we'll get a, a new mood board solution okay so um i think i now have a much clearer picture of how you know this uh, mid journey works in terms of prompts, creating images, then giving either using a button to up up sample or get variations, um, etc., and then different prompts. Um, what I'd like to do is go back to um, the uh, the whole thing of the stable diffusion, both external, uh, you know, freestanding and inside Archicad. So because I think that's well, it, certainly they all have a different point in the um, of use. Uh, so you said, Mark, concepts, just getting a feel for things, maybe getting the client to say, yeah, I really like that Japanese style, or you know, I like I like this this feel. Um, then, without even necessarily saying this is computer generated, just say, here are some things to choose from. What do you like better? What do you like about this? And what do you not like about it? Um, so. But once you then get a concept, and it's great if, if you're a good sketch artist like that, you know, your colleague there, you know, is able to sketch in five minutes a pretty well-defined thing, or you take a an Archicad model, quick, simple one, and take a, a view of it that will show things. Uh, but how, so how does stable diffusion work from that? We saw the very brief little prompt, uh, Vladimir, inside Archicad. But tell us, you know, a little bit more about using stable diffusion. Uh, me? 
Well, yeah, you've used it for some of the external things. So how how is that interface? Can you bring that up, or is it will it take too long? I think that that'll take too long. But it, it's it looks very much like the uh, the demonstration that Vladimir was doing. So you 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 have an image, a base image, and you you put in a few parameters in your command, your your prompt for what you want it to do with the image, uh, and then it runs through that same process uh, that we saw in Archicad. And I, I'm I am most most excited about that future. Uh, I think that's that's going to be really impactful to our to our practice. Uh, and then and getting back to the there was a question about um, preferred platform preferred hardware. Um, and I'm I'm I haven't done it yet, but I'm I'm really uh, leaning toward the the new MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M3 chip. Um, Graphisoft and is, is making a big deal about that alignment. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm attending a seminar tomorrow about the the power of of the that M3 chip and, and ArchiCAD together. So uh, that's that's where I think it's going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Steve Nichols says, "Do you know if Graphsoft has any training videos on how to use the uh, ArchiCAD and Stable Diffusion stuff?" I have not seen any yet, but they're they they are promoting. They're they're actively Graphsoft is actively promoting that relationship. So um, I've seen a couple of email posts that are announcing it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some at least uh, feature of the of, of, of something to explore the features that are, are going to be available or are available. So Vladimir, have you um, seen anything um, in terms of training? Uh, no, as I for as uh, long as I know, they don't offer support for it. It's an external pro program. They just offer the plugin, the interface for the connection, and that's all. And also inside Archicad, uh, you can make only exterior renderings with stable diffusion, no interior re uh, renderings. Hmm. Can you, if you, if you added in, well, you, I guess Mark showed an interior view with the staircase, so it's not a limitation of stable diffusion interpreting a visual image. Um, okay, so there's a question from Robert Sonberg. How is AI being implemented in structural engineering? I don't know, how, how any ideas on, on uh, what might be possible or coming? Um, I, I've not heard anything, but um... ChatGPT, MidJourney, they're all getting their getting their tentacles into every industry, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a uh, an engineering solution that would would audit and and try different beam sections, different materials, and give you a, a feedback of of what each one you know what, you know what what does this wood beam cost versus a smaller steel beam? You could do it with two C channels. I I think it's going to allow you to explore those options. And give you a, a richer data set to to help make your decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, you showed us, Mark, um, just a little screen um, capture animation of uh, one of the tools uh, that you just drew a single line, and then it would, it, and some prompting in terms of uh, the number of rooms or the the how the rooms would be laid out. Um, that's a very interesting thing where at least it's hypothetically doing um, you know configurations as opposed to just visual interpretations um, right. now that is very limited i mean it's impressive that it's figuring out more units and it's putting some walls in what i presume are somewhat reasonable positions for you know having you know bathrooms or closets or you know bedrooms and things like that um, where where do you think this is going or do you, are there other tools that you know of that actually allow you to create a shape you know like an l shape or a u shape building or you know other things and it's three stories and it has a cantilever you know i mean where is that going yeah i mean i i suspect since they're only demonstrating the the single line implementation that that's that's its best performance right now but it, it can't be far off that you can that you could build uh u-shaped chicago buildings or, or l shape um, I, I have to imagine that those are there. It's it's likely that intersection where they change that the interface has a difficulty making all of those rooms fit. But um, so they're showing the the most obvious solution. I they, they've got to be developing more sophisticated applications going forward. Mm -hmm. 
Vladimir, do you have any perspective on any of this thing about configurations or room layouts? You can make a lot of uh, a lot of layouts. You can generate uh, 10, 20, 100 layouts if you want. The problem is how will you analyze them? How will how will you choose one or two or three or ten uh, uh, examples to move on with them? Well, you the can problem is that right. the generation is the analyzing. Well, there is on the right some interesting analysis. analysis. So if we assume that it could do different forms like L-shaped or, you know, other other stuff, the analysis is maybe one of the easier things. They can just say, how, how much is the area and, you know, other things. Um, but I mean, that's a good question. It is the interpretation of the professional, but these tools, I mean, it's totaling up areas like that, you know. Yeah, I, I just pulled a few of those screenshots from their website, and this one does indicate some kind of description of materials, quantities, cost, totals. So it's doing some kind of cost analysis um, based on that on that design. Mm -hmm. um, so Paul Adams says, I think that doing value engineering would be another good application of AI. So once you have a little bit more fine control over it, yes, you could compare different things and it'll generate some data from it. Um, Nicole asks, what is the cost for stable diffusion? I don't know the raw cost of stable diffusion. It's included with Archicad. That's that's kind of where I'm headed. Uh, it's the JMAD group in Minneapolis that really does the standalone uh, stable diffusion application. Right. So Michael says Archicad AI visualizer powered by stable diffusion introduction YouTube video. So I, I you're mentioning that. So there is a, a video on the Graphisoft site. If you just go to the graphisoft.com site, one of their featured um, areas right now is AI visualization and if you click on that I mean I remember seeing a, a three or four minute video showing you know some some examples uh, of, of how it could be used uh, but I'm sure there'll be a lot more um, and in terms of cost if you recall twin motion when it first came out for Archicad users Graphisoft arranged a licensing deal Graphics Archicad users on subscription or maintenance contract got a free license to Twin Motion um, for you know a couple of years. I think it was something like that. Uh, so that of course got many users excited about it and using it, um, and they wanted to build their user base and get more case studies or examples. Uh, now you don't get that with Archicad, but Twin Motion is very modest cost. It's you can use it for free with no problem at all. It's just that it, um, they limit the resolution a bit to, you know, not the max resolution and it's not for commercial use. So if you're not publishing things with it, you can probably use it internally as meeting with clients and things like that. If you want it to be, you know, fully compliant, then you pay $500 a year, I think, something like that. And then you can use it with clients and get high resolution images. So they're, they're, it's not, being priced as a, you know, five thousand dollar program like Archicad or or Revit or you know or ten thousand whatever these things are now, um, it's being priced as a consumer level product. But you know, amazing what what you can do. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think we're running short. Or let's say I don't see any other questions that have been posted. Last chance for questions, and maybe some closing comments. Uh, uh, Vladimir, let's say, what, 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 what are you looking forward to exploring next? What, what's the next thing you want to work on and, and push the limits? Uh, regarding AI? <laughs> well, let's say just say in Archicad in general, but AI, if, if, if it includes that. Uh, I plan on implementing the AI in all the projects, but uh, at the moment, just in the early stages for the concept, and then uh, just using uh, Twin Motion. I'm using Twin Motion like uh, I don't know three or four years ago, and uh, it gets uh, very good results. But uh, more effective than AI and uh, Twin Motion, it's BMix. BMix is the main tool for communicating with the color clients. is the most uh, effective, 
uh, they like the renderings, they say they are okay, but the 3D models on their phone or, or tablet, it's, uh, it's the ma main selling point. Mm. Okay, good point. Um, actually makes me think, you know, I, I should feature some uh, BIMX on one of these things. Uh, you know, BIMX has been around for a long, long time, continues to add new functionality, um, but I think a lot of arcade users aren't even aware of what it can do. Um, so that uh, if um, either of you want to come back when I do BIMX, that's fine, or else I'll, I'll find someone else who's really, uh, you know, loves using it all the time. Mark, what what are your what are you planning to work on in the in you know the next few months or year? Well, I am really excited about getting the stable diffusion plugin for ArchiCAD running. I think that's going to open up a lot of avenues. Um, I suspect Twin Motion. I mean, AI is going into everything, so I suspect Twin Motion will get a a technology update that embraces AI and and hopefully streamlines that process. Um, um, oh, and, and the, the the Apple Vision Plus product, I think, is is going to be game changing for us. Um, I'm hoping uh, Graphisoft comes up with a uh, with an environment that, that you know works directly with the Apple Vision product. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's uh, I think that's where it's going. Yeah, yeah, some exciting things. So let's see if there's any other a few other comments. Um, so Andy says, can you please share the link to the ArchiCAD Stable Diffusion training? We don't, there is no training on Stable Diffusion. There is just a little demo video on um, uh, on the Graphisoft website. Yeah. So there is no they training. Have a guidebook, uh, a very big, basic guidebook on the uh, Graphisoft website. How is to it use it, how to make the, yeah. 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 Okay. So um, can you maybe just point, send that? A link to that and then I'll, I'll add that to the notes for this video so we'll share all the resources we can obviously the uh, mid-journey training that um, Mark was showing on screen a little bit uh, that's a paid product from somebody I have not met yet uh, but we'll share a link to where you can find out about it and if you want to buy it for $50 then you'll uh, benefit. Um, Cindy says this has been fabulous I'm excited to watch the replay okay and Chris Craver is, yay, a shout out to BIMX, absolutely. Um, and uh, Dean Johnston, hey, Dean, uh, no question, join late, appreciate sharing this topic and tools. Paul Adams, thanks to Vladimir and Mark for sharing their experience. And Mark Christopher, oh, wow, great to see you here. Don't know you well, but I, I know you're very well respected in, I believe, in the San Diego area, um, sort of an old veteran both in ArchiCAD and architecture. I've been having problems with Twinmotion's ability to manage materials between ArchiCAD and Twinmotion, so I've migrated to Enscape. I wonder if Graphisoft will support AI there if Enscape adopts AI. I think everybody's gonna be doing AI where possible. And of course, Graphisoft, one of the things that they do, I think pretty well is they say, you know what, this other company, we can you know, get more visibility for them, they can get more visibility for us. So. Uh, the Enscape partnership with Graphisoft is fairly fresh. I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, you know, creative possibilities there. So anyway, thanks, and, Mark. And, and back to the BIMX. Uh, BIMX is even better with BIM Cloud uh, because it enables uh, a lot of communication. So I, I've, I've consulted with a colleague of mine who's a design build company, and he's issued iPads to his uh, field superintendents. And so they have the model of the project that they're, that they're managing. And if there's any punch list items, they're making, they're sketching in the field or highlighting or taking a picture. And then that communication is going back through BIM Cloud to the office staff who are working in ArchiCAD. And they're getting live data, live direction, live questions from the field. It is super powerful. Um, and I, I issue it to my clients and they, they're able to make uh, comments and questions within that environment too, and it comes right into ArchiCAD. It's great to make those connections. So, well, that, yeah. that would be a good topic. Yeah, brave new world. All right, so more thank yous and congratulations and things um, from Karsten and David Yaguchi, Ray Kelly. So uh, we'll finish up um, this recording. I'll place on my YouTube channel. Um, that's uh, YouTube.com/slash Eric Fabro. I'll also put it on the ArchiCAD user website. That's archicadusercom 
um, and uh, I'll put in notes with you know different uh, information you know in terms of links to, to things. Uh, I am always open for um, helping our KiCad users and spreading the good news in terms of the tools that we have, the power, uh, and how it can help you achieve your goals in terms of design and working with clients. Um, if you'd like more information, I mentioned Mark is a member of the Architect Marketing Institute Mastermind Program. If you'd like some information on how to attract and win better clients and projects, you can reach out to me or you can go to archmarketing.org. That's A-R-C-H marketing.org. Um, if you want more information on my products and, and for Archicad training, you can go to archicadtraining.com. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a training course and a coaching program. So all of that is there for you to enjoy and benefit from. Thanks so much for joining us this month, Mark, Vladimir. We'll Thank finish. you. Take care.